All right, can I get an audio check, please? Sergeant Bradley, hey. can you do an audio check? Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. Speakers on the floor, once again. Council members, please Recording take your seats. Quiet on the floor, please. Thank you. Can we close those ropes, please? Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please place all electronic devices to vibrate. Mr. Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of April 11th, 2023. I'm Majority Leader Keith Powers and would like to thank everyone for joining us here today. If you'd like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on the City Council website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call. Abreu. Present. Ariola. Aviles. Presente. Ayala. Here. Barron. Here. Botcher. <laughs> Present. Thank you, man. Brannon. Here. Brewer. Here. Brooks Powers. Present. Caban. Present. Carr. Present. De La Rosa. Here. Dinowitz. Here. Farias. Present. Felice. Presente. Gennaro. Here. Gutierrez. Presente. Hanif. Present. Hanks. Present. Holden. Here. Hudson. Present. Joseph. Present. Hagen. Present. Krishnan. Here. Lee. Here. Lewis. Present. Marte. Here. Mili. Menon. Here. Moya. Present. Narcisse. Here. Nurse. Ose. Present. Paladino. Wrestler. Here. Richardson Jordan. Present. Riley. Present. Rivera. Salamanca. Present. Sanchez. Present. Shulman. Here. Stevens. Here. Ung. Present. Velasquez. Present. Vernikoff. Williams. Here. Juan. Present. Jaeger. Here. Morelli. Here. Powers. Here. Speaker Adams. Present. Thank you. We'll now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Dr. Lakeisha Walrond, president of the New York Theological Seminar, located at 475 Riverside Drive in Manhattan. Welcome. Good afternoon. It is such an honor to be with you all on today. Let's pray. Eternal God, great creator, holy one, the God of many names, the God of our weary years and our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far along the way, thou who has by thy might 
led us into the light. Keep us forever in thy path, we pray. God, we thank you for your presence in our lives and your provision in our city and your protection of our hearts. We ask that you pour your spirit and blessings upon this diverse council, called and chosen to lead our great city. Bless their work, bless their health, bless their families, bless their communities. Remind us all that the greatest among us is a servant of all. Remind us that true leaders are servant leaders that treat the needs of the people as holy and are called to serve for the common good of all. Grant each member of this diverse and inclusive council the wisdom to know what is right and the courage to do what is right. Let each word be guided by the spirit of community, each action guided by a spirit of love, and each decision guided by the spirit of justice. God, we pray for continued guidance, discernment, and purpose. And we lift this prayer in your many names and in peace, joy, and justice. Amen. Thank you, and thank you for being with us today. Uh, now we ask Councilmember Sean Abreu to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, Majority Leader. I want to thank Rev. Dr. Lakeisha Warren from the New York Theological Seminary for being here today. Rev. Dr. Warren is an educator, visionary leader, and activist whose immense contributions in empowering women and children has been felt throughout the country. We are proud to have her based here in the district. With that, I make a motion for unanimous consent to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you, Councilmember Brayu. We'll now have the adoption of the minutes by Councilmember Natasha Williams. Thank you. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of March 2nd, 2023 be adopted as printed. Thank you. We'll have messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M137 EEPC annual report. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M's 138 and 139. Coupled on call-up vote, I now ask that the clerk take a roll call vote on today's land use call-ups. Abreu. Present. Aye. Thank you. Ariola. Aviles. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Aye. Botcher. Aye. Brennan. Aye. Brewer. Aye. Brooks Powers. Aye. Caban. Uh, Mr. Majority, is this on the land use call ups? I'm sorry. Land use call ups. Um, I request permission to vote on all land use call ups and all other items on today's agenda. Go ahead. Okay. One moment, please. Um, I am voting I on all except, sorry, one moment. Um, I'm I on all uh, with the exception of uh, intro 606, of which I vote no, um, and I also am voting no on the Dr. Aquista appointment. Thank you, and thanks for your patience. Thank you. Carr. I on all. De La Rosa. Aye. Dinowitz. Aye. Farias. I vote aye on all. Feliz. Aye. Councilmember Feliz. Councilmember Feliz. Land use call ups? Aye on all. My apologies. Thank you. Ariola. Aye on all. Thank you. Gennaro. Gutierrez. Uh, aye, aye. Um, aye for Gennaro. Thank you. Councilman Gutierrez. Gutierrez, aye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. 
Hanif. Aye. Hanks. Aye on all. Thank you. Holden. Aye. Hudson. Aye. Joseph. Aye. Kagan. Aye. Krishnan. Aye. Lee. Aye. Thank you. Lewis. Aye. Marte. Aye. Mealy. Menon. Aye. Moya. A vote aye. Thank you. Narcisse. Aye. Nurse. Aye. Ose. Aye vote aye. Paladino. Oh, aye. Thank you. Wrestler. Aye. Richardson Jordan. Aye. Riley. Aye. Rivera. Salamanca. Aye. Sanchez. Aye. Shulman. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Ung. Aye. Velasquez. Aye. Vernikov. Williams. Aye. Juan. Aye. Jaeger. Mr. President, I'd be excused to vote on the entire agenda. Go ahead. Thank you. On the land use call-ups, I vote aye. On the, uh, on the uh, uh, coupled on general orders calendar, I vote aye on all with the exception of intros 531 and intro, uh, intro 4. Thank you. That's right. Resolution 531? No, introduction 531. Is there not an introduction? On the bid? Oh, I'm sorry, resolution 531. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Borelli. Aye. Powers. Aye. Speaker Adams. I vote aye. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. 48 in the affirmative and zero against. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Adrian Adams. Thank you very much, Majority Leader. Before we begin, and good afternoon, everyone. Before we begin, I'd like to extend heartfelt greetings to our visitors, the college access students from the Brooklyn YWCA. We welcome you to City Council Chambers today and all of our visitors in the balcony. Before we begin, I want to honor the lives of two construction workers who died while on the job at JFK International Airport earlier this month. Our hearts go out to the families and loved ones of 41-year-old Francisco Reyes and 28-year-old Fernando Lagunas Pereira. Our city's construction workers are pivotal to the success and growth of New York City, especially JFK Airport, which serves as our gateway. We must ensure that essential workers who contribute to the building and daily activities of our city are safe. I also want to take a moment to wish a speedy recovery to 22-year-old officer Brett Baller of the 103rd Precinct in Jamaica, Queens, who was shot on the line of duty last week. We thank him for his public service to the people of our city, and we certainly want to see him get well soon. Since the last time we've met, we've lost at least six New Yorkers to fatal fires that took place across our city. These fires occurred in Councilmember Rivera's district, Councilmember Brewer's district, Councilmember Shulman's district, Councilmember Hudson's district, and just yesterday in Councilmember Caban's district, where two people were killed in a fire sparked by a lithium ion battery. These losses are heartbreaking, and the pain inflicted on families and communities is immeasurable. We have much more work to do to prevent these deadly fires, and as a council, we remain committed to taking action to advance these efforts. There is absolutely no place for hate in New York City, and we must denounce it swiftly whenever we see it. I was disturbed 
to learn that an anti-LGBTQIA plus attack took place in Hell's Kitchen just last week. There was also a pride flag that was taken off a restaurant's flagpole, torn and burned in Bay Ridge in Councilmember Brannon's district. As Councilmember Botcher eloquently put it, we will not be cowed and we will not be intimidated by these attacks. We will always stand up together against hate. This past Friday, a federal judge in Texas issued a dangerous and unprecedented ruling to invalidate the FDA's approval of mifepristone, also known as the abortion pill. This preliminary ruling threatens the health of millions of women and birthing people across the country who rely on this FDA-approved drug. In fact, mifepristone has provided more than five million people with safe and effective access to abortion and miscarriage care for over 25 years safely. We must be clear that taking away this drug will lead to unnecessary harm and it is an attack on both reproductive health care and the entire practice of medicine. Last year, our Women Majority Council enacted the historic New York City Abortion Rights Act, including legislation by Councilmember Carlina Rivera to require Department of Health and Mental Hygiene Health Clinics to provide free abortion medication. As a result of our efforts, access to abortion medication is now the law. Here in New York City, mifepristone remains available to anyone who needs it, including at the Morrisania Department of Health and Mental Hygiene Clinic in the Bronx, Health and Hospitals Public Hospitals, and private health clinics. Our ma Women Majority City Council and the men who get it will continue to defend, support, and expand access to abortion and reproductive health care. New York City will remain a beacon for safe and accessible care for all. Last week, the council released its official response to the mayor's fiscal year 2024 preliminary budget. We made clear our vision for the city budget, one that invests in New Yorkers, delivers essential services for New Yorkers, and supports the economic health and stability of our city. The council's preliminary budget response accounts for all of the economic and budgetary challenges that potentially lie ahead any potential economic downturns or additional costs of basic services for those here in our city seeking asylum in the United States. It also covered payment of new labor contract settlements for the municipal workforce. Out of $2.7 billion in available funds that our budget response identified, we proposed setting aside $1.4 billion for reserves to protect our city from these various potential risks. The other $1.3 billion should be invested in essential services such as education, housing, food assistance, libraries, legal services, community safety, and other programs that New Yorkers need. These are the types of investments that keep our city healthy, safe, and stable to successfully recover and weather any expected challenges. What New Yorkers cannot afford, however, is another round of budget cuts that threaten to undermine our neighborhoods and recovery. Taking away libraries, education programs, and other essential services will destabilize communities and result in harm to New Yorkers. We cannot and we will not accept that. This council is fully prepared to fight for our budget vision to meet the needs of New Yorkers. In the coming weeks, our focus will be on supporting communities across the city in their recovery pushing back against excessive and unnecessary cuts that will hurt the health and stability of our city. And now for all Muslims of, all Muslim New Yorkers who are continuing to observe Ramadan, I hope you continue to enjoy this blessed season with your family and loved ones. Ramadan Mubarak. I also want to wish our Jewish neighbors a peaceful and joyous Passover. This important holiday is a reminder of the importance of cherishing rights and freedoms and why it is imperative to continue passing on shared history and its lessons to future generations. To everyone celebrating Passover, Kag Pesach, Kag Sher Volsamech. And <laughs> this past Sunday, many New Yorkers across the city, the city celebrated Easter, also known as Resurrection Sunday. 
This season symbolizes renewal and rebirth, and it offers all who celebrate the time to reflect and embark on new beginnings. Orthodox Easter will be celebrated on April 16th, so I want to wish everyone who observes a very happy Easter. April is Autism Acceptance Month, which aims to promote acceptance and uplift the voices of people with autism. New York will always be a city that supports the well-being of people of all abilities and spectrums of neurodiversity. And as an aunt of one who is a part of this brilliant population, I celebrate with you, my nephew. April is also National Sexual Assault Awareness Month, during which we raise awareness and advance public education about the prevalence of sexual assault across the country. As a city, we must continue to empower survivors and support them with necessary resources and pathways to healing from trauma while working to prevent sexual assault. We're also celebrating April as Arab American Heritage Month, Join us in uplifting the many contributions of our Arab American communities throughout this month and beyond. And tomorrow night, I invite all New Yorkers to join us in the City Council Chambers for our Garifuna Heritage Celebration. Doors open at 5 p.m. and the event begins at 5.30 p.m. I want to thank Council Members Amanda Farias, Kevin Riley, Althea Stevens, and Marjorie Velasquez for co-sponsoring this celebration. There are several other holidays and notable days that I want to acknowledge. April 14th is Vasaki, one of the most important celebrations for our Sikh community. The council hosted a wonderful Vasaki and Sikh Heritage Month celebration in the council chambers last week, and I thank everyone who made it a great success. April 15th is Jackie Robinson Day, celebrating one of our country's major icons and athletes who broke Major League Baseball's color barrier in 1957. We will always uplift the life and legacy of Jackie Robinson, who left an undeniable imprint on the nation. April 17th is Yom HaShoah, or Holocaust Remembrance Day. On this day, we come together to remember the six million Jewish people and countless others who were victims and recommit ourselves to ensure no similar atrocity will ever happen again. And April 18th, ladies and gentlemen, is tax day. As a reminder to all New Yorkers, the tax filing deadline is coming up. Our city offers free tax prep services for anyone making $80,000 or less. So be sure to visit nyc.gov to learn more. I also want to give a plug to the continued efforts by the council in partnership with the administration to recruit New Yorkers to work for our city and fill important vacancies at our various city agencies. We've been holding hiring events across the city that connect people to municipal jobs. Recently, we held events in Manhattan, Queens, and Brooklyn within Council Members Botcher, Shulman, and Hudson's districts. There is an upcoming event on Thursday, April 13th in Manhattan in Council Member De La Rosa's district. The civil service is a pipeline to economic stability and our municipal workforce is essential to our city. We urge New Yorkers seeking employment to attend and join the city's workforce. And finally, please join me in wishing a very happy belated birthday to Council Member Sandy Nurse. And an early happy birthday to Council Member Crystal Hudson and Council Member Julie Wan. I hope you all had and will have a great birthday surrounded by your loved ones. Before we move on, I want to recognize some special attendees, which I already have. We welcome them once again, our students from YWC of Brooklyn's College Access Program, led by their CEO, Martha Camber. Welcome once again to our stated meeting, and I hope you enjoy your visit to City Hall. Now let's move on to our stated agenda. First. We will vote on the following finance items. Resolution 531, sponsored by Council Members Justin Brandon and Farrell Lewis, will set the date for a public hearing on legislation authorizing the combination of the Church Avenue Business Improvement District and the Flatbush Avenue Business Improvement District into one combined bid. The hearing will play, take place on Thursday, April 27th at 10 a.m. in the committee room. 
A pre-considered resolution sponsored by Councilmember Brannon to authorize an Article 11 e exemption for five buildings in Crown Heights in Councilmember Mealy's district. And a pre-considered resolution sponsored by Councilmember Brannon to amend an existing Article 11 exemption for one building in Alphabet City in Councilmember Rivera's district. Next, we'll vote on the following appointments to the New York City Board of Health. Dr. Angelo Aquista, Dr. Mayra Galvez, Dr. Michael Lindsay, and Dr. Judith Salerno. Lastly, we will vote on the following pieces of legislation. Resolution 191, sponsored by Civil Service and Labor Committee Chair Carmen uh, De La Rosa, calls on the fast food company Wendy's to join the Fair Food Program, a partnership among participating retail produce growers and buyers that ensures fair working conditions and wages for farm workers. Of the five largest fast food chains in the country, McDonald's, Subway, Burger King, Taco Bell, and Wendy's, only Wendy's has refused to participate in the Fair Food Program. We thank our staff, Elizabeth Arts, for her work. Resolution 152, sponsored by Council Member Shauna Abreu, calls on the New York City Department of Education to designate a Jewish Heritage Day in our city's public schools in celebration of the contributions and achievements of Jewish Americans. We thank our staff member, Jan Atwell. Resolution 344A, sponsored by Public Advocate Jumani Williams, calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation to establish the Housing Access Voucher Program, a rental assistance program that would provide housing vouchers to New Yorkers who are homeless or face eviction. We thank our staff members, Audrey Sun, Taylor Zaloni, and Jose Conde. Next, as we celebrate National Pet Day, we will be voting on Introduction 4A, sponsored by Deputy Speaker Diana Ayala, to prohibit the sale of guinea pigs in pet shops. The, the bill would still allow them to be available for adoption, Shh, will be available for adoption in animal shelters. Prohibiting the sale of guinea pigs in pet shops will bring relief to city animal shelters and other rescuers who have experienced a surge in abandoned and surrendered guinea pigs in the past three years as well as cutting off the pipeline into New York City from inhumane sources. And we thank our staff, Nick Connell, Sarah Schuker, Christopher Pepe, and Manhor Boot. Introduction 675A, sponsored by Councilmember Crystal Hudson, would require the creation of a telemedicine accessibility plan. The bill expands telemedicine services to New Yorkers who have difficulty in accessing in-person health care services, including older adults, people with disabilities, and New Yorkers currently involved in the justice system. The idea for this legislation was first introduced in my state of the city address last year, and I'm very thankful to Councilmember Hudson for her leadership in advancing it. Thank you also to our staff, Mark Chen, Christopher Pepe, Sarah Sucker, and Manhor Boot. Introduction 128A, sponsored by Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, would require every city park bathroom to have a diaper changing table by December 2027, finally. Right now, less than half of the approximately 1,400 bathrooms under the jurisdiction of the Parks Department do not have diaper changing tables, making it difficult for families with young children to fully use city parks. This legislation will make a tangible difference for families with young children who play, who play in our parks. Thank you to our staff members, Chris Satori and Patrick Mulvihill. Introduction 8A, sponsored by Council Member Justin Brannon, would require the disclosure of full ticket prices whenever they are displayed in advertisements for ticketed sports, entertainment, and other types of events. Under this legislation, ads must display the total price that customers have to pay, including taxes and fees. The bill seeks to prevent consumer deception based on the high fees charged by some ticket sellers. It is critical that New Yorkers and visitors who attend ticketed events do not get taken advantage of by companies. We thank our staff members, Sarah Swain and Natalie Meltzer. And finally, as we observe Earth Month and the upcoming Earth Day, we will be voting on two pieces of legislation that are crucial to our ongoing fight against climate change. The climate crisis is already here, and we know that urgent action on all levels of government is needed to protect and preserve the world that we call home. The legislation we're passing today is just a few of the many bills that we're focused on. Introduction 606A, sponsored by Council Member Alexa Aviles, would protect clean air by amending the city's idling laws to restrict idling to one minute in spaces adjacent to or within most parks. Thank you to our staff members, Samara Swanston, Ricky Chawla, and Andrew Bourne. 
and introduction 239A, sponsored by our Environmental Protection, Resiliency, and Waterfronts Committee Chair, Councilmember James Gennaro, would require the Department of Buildings to conduct targeted annual outreach to educate building owners about the benefits of installing solar and green roof systems. We thank our staff members, Samara Swanston, Ricky Chawla, and Andrew Bourne. Thank you very much for your attention, and now I turn it back into the hands of our Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Adams. We're now going to move into discussion of general orders. I'm going to first call on Councilmember Salamanca. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. Uh, today we will vote on my bill, Intro 128. Uh, currently, the City of New York, New York City requires diaper changing stations to be available in all bathrooms in new or recently renovated public buildings where merchandise is sold and places like theaters, bowling alleys, museums, and shopping malls. But surprisingly, though, the one place I noticed that did not require diaper changing stations were New York City park bathrooms. Despite being a place where families spend a great deal of their time, the lack of changing stations left parents changing their children's diapers on park benches, equipment, their laps, or even on the grounds, all of which are unsanitary locations. When I first introduced this bill in October of 2019, only about 31% of New York City parks bathrooms had sufficient changing stations. Since then, Parks has begun closing the gap on this issue and has doubled the amount of changing stations in city bathrooms, which I commend them for. However, legislation is needed to require a 100% fulfillment rate in a timely manner. That is why I introduced Intro 128, which sets benchmarks on how quickly changing stations are installed in parks bathrooms. Without Intro 128, parents throughout the city will continue to face changing their children's diapers in unsanitary conditions. Thank you, Mr. Majority. Thank you, Councilmember Salamanca. We'll now go to Councilmember Hudson. Thank you so much, Majority Leader. Um, I want to talk about uh, Intro 675, which we're voting on today. Passing Intro 675 marks another big step in our effort to ensure all New Yorkers have the opportunity to age in place with the dignity and care we all deserve. With this law, the city will be required to create a telemedicine accessibility plan to improve the availability of portable monitoring and telehealth devices for populations that could be better served by telemedicine services. Intro 675 will directly address this divide and offer greater accessibility to telemedicine services for older New Yorkers citywide. This bill goes further than just expanding medical visit options. It requires the city to create a plan for the provision of portable monitoring devices like blood pressure monitors and glucometers, as well as tablets and laptops that can provide communication with healthcare professionals and bridge the digital divide. We know that when we legislate for those who are most vulnerable and those with the greatest needs, everyone benefits. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else signed up for general orders? Okay. Seeing no one, we will move into the report of special committees. None. Report of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Consumer and Worker Protection, Intro 8A, Ticket Cost Disclosures. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, Resiliency and Waterfronts, Intro 239A, Solar and Green Roof Systems. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 606A, Idling of Motor Vehicles and Parks. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Resolution 531, Flatbush Avenue Bid. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 179 and Reso 569 and preconsidered LU 180 and Reso 570 property tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, Intro 4A, Sale of Guinea Pigs. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 675A, Telemedicine Accessibility Plan. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, Intro 128A, Diaper Changing Accommodations in Parks. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, M130 and Reso 571, approving the appointment of Dr. Michael Lindsay, Board of Health. Coupled on general orders. M131 and Reso 572, approving the appointment of Dr. Angelo Aquista, Board of Health. Coupled on general orders. M132 and Reso 573, approving the appointment of Dr. Maida Galvez, Board of Health. Coupled on general orders. M133 and Reso 574, approving the appointment of Dr. Judith Salerno, Board of Health. Coupled on general orders, I would now ask that the clerk take a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on today's general orders calendar. Abreu. Aye. Ariola. I'm a no on intros 4A and 606A, and I on all the rest. 
Thank you. Aviles. Permission to explain my vote? Go ahead. I am an I on all with the exception of M31 and Reso 572. Um, today we are voting on a series of bills aimed at making our city greener and therefore healthier. And I'm proud that my legislation, Intro 606, is part of this package. And I thank you all for your vote today. Thank you for acknowledging climate change and, and its impacts. I also want to take a moment to thank my constituent, Madeline McDonald, for inspiring this legislation. And while I'm sure Ms. McDonald would agree that much more work needs to be done with expanding our anti-idling policies, in the meantime, making sure children and families are protected at our city parks, playgrounds, and green spaces is a step forward. Along the way, I was glad to be joined in advancing this legislation with air quality advocates from across the city, as well as our last mile advocates who, use, who, who will use this incremental step to make sure delivery vehicles are also not in interfering with needed breathable playtime for our children. As an elected representative of Sunset Park and Red Hook, both environmental justice communities, I will continue to put the health of our residents first and not just in the month of April. We must be bolder and better in addressing climate change, both systematically and changing our own behavior. There is little time to waste. Thank you for voting yes on this legislation and more work to come. Ayala. Permission to explain my vote? Go ahead. Um, I just want to very briefly thank all of the advocates that worked on legislation <laughs> uh, around the guinea pig uh, bill and who happened to be outside waiting for us. So um, I just wanted to say thank you all uh, and thank you to my colleagues for the support. Thank you. I vote aye. <laughs> thank you. Baron. I vote, I abstain on M130, 131, 132, and 133 and the accompanying resos, I abstain. And I also abstain on Reso 153, the DOE creating a Jewish Heritage Day. I think we need to look at other uh, ethnic groups as well. And I vote on I on all the rest. Thank you. Butcher. Aye on all. Brennan. Aye on all. Brewer. Aye, aye on all. Brooks Powers. Aye on all. Carr. I'm no on introductions 4A and 606A, and I on the rest. De La Rosa. Aye. Dinowitz. Aye. Farias. I vote aye on all. Feliz. Permission to explain my vote. Go ahead. Uh, I vote aye on all. I want to congratulate uh, Council Member Salamanca for working on such an important issue. I also want to uh, congratulate uh, our Deputy Speaker, Diana Ayala. Thank you for looking out for our guinea pigs. <laughs> I had guinea pigs when I was younger. Guinea pigs make great friends, they make great pets, and I encourage everybody to consider adopting one today. Thank you so much. Councilman? Councilman Felice? I and all. Beautiful, thank you. Gennaro. Uh, Mr. Leader, I ask permission to speak on my vote. Go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Leader. I, 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 I want to congratulate everyone who's passing bills today. Certainly, uh, the two green bills we're passing, were, these are certainly good measures. I'd like to thank Councilmember Aviles for her good bill on idling. It's a good step forward and, um, um, uh, and, and builds on what we've done on idling. There are more um, idling bills to come. And uh, we look forward to those uh, regarding um, uh, 239A, uh, my bill that would um, uh, give the, uh, which would you know get the um, needed information to building owners, um, uh, what they can do regarding green roofs, what they can do regarding solar, 
Uh, people have the, that um, information uh, uh, you know, given to them, just like we did Local Law 87 many, many years ago about doing um, energy audits when you give people information and show how they can save um, by you know, retrofitting their homes uh, they, and, and buildings. They will take that information and act in their own um, economic best interest. That is the goal of this bill. I think it will be um, a uh, you know uh, success in that regard. It's been a pleasure to work um, uh, with the with the uh, staff of the committee and the speaker and and, and her team, uh, you know, regarding uh, this um, uh, the robust um, environmental agenda of this institution. We look forward to other environmental bills that will be coming out at the end of the month. And um, with that, I thank everyone. Um, I urge a yes vote on, um, on, on the green bills today, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Gutierrez. Aye. Hanif. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 606, on which I abstain, and M131, and accompanying resolution 572, on which I vote no. Thank you. Hanks. I vote aye. Thank you. Holden. Aye on all. Hudson. Aye on all. Joseph. Aye on all. Kagan. Permission to explain my vote? Go ahead. Thank you. So I'm voting uh, yes on all uh, proposed bills, with exception of intro 4A and 606. The goal of the anti-idling legislation should be to prevent drivers from leaving their commercial trucks or personal vehicles running for a long period of time, polluting our air near parks and schools, and causing problems for neighborhoods. It's a great idea, you know. But not for one minute. The whole idea here is for one minute. So next time we will pass a legislation uh, to, to find someone who kept their uh, truck or car for one second, maybe. That's why I have to vote no on 606. Everything else I vote aye. Thank you. Krishnan. Uh, I vote aye on all, uh, with the exception of M131 and, and Resolution 572, in which I abstain. Um, and I also want to congratulate uh, Councilman Salamanca on a great bill for our New York City parks. Oh, thank you. Lee. I and all. Lewis. I vote I and all. Marte. I and all. Menin. I and all. Moya. I vote aye. Thank you. Narcisse. I vote aye. Nurse. I vote no on M131 and Brazo 572 and I on all the rest. Thank you. Ose. I vote aye on all. Paladino. I vote aye on all except for res intro 4A and 606A. Thank you. Wrestler. Thank you. I'll vote aye on all with the exception of M131 and accompanying Reso 572 for which I shall abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Richardson Jordan. Aye on all. Riley. I don't know. Salamanca. I don't know. Sanchez. I on all, and permission to explain that vote? Thank Go you. ahead. Thank you. Um, I especially want to highlight uh, the resolution number 344A uh, in re with respect to calling on the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation that would create a housing access voucher program. We have a housing crisis. We need the state to chip into uh, the challenges that we face, uh, the Section 8 vouchers that we we're have. We're speaking on, um, we're not in, we're not in residents yet. We're, we're coming is up. what I will say later. Thank you, Majority Leader. All right. 
Good to have a sneak preview. Thank you. Mealy. I vote. Uh, excuse I me. So, Councilmember Sanchez, you, you're in. I started with my vote, so I. <laughs> okay, thank you. Councilmember Mealy. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Shulman. Permission to explain my vote? Go ahead. Guinea pigs should be adopted, not sold in pet stores. During the height of COVID, people bought guinea pigs as pets and then abandoned them in droves when they discovered the significant challenges in taking care of them. I am proud to be a prime co-sponsor of today's Intro 4A legislation introduced by Deputy Speaker Diana Ayala, which will bring relief to overwhelmed animal shelters and help keep these sensitive animals safe. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Stevens. I on all except intro 4A, and I vote no. Thank you. Ong. I on all. He's gone. Vernikov. Velasquez. I on all. Thank you. Williams. I vote aye on all. Juan. Aye on all. Borelli. A moment of indulgence, sir. Reluctantly, but yes. So I first, I'd like to uh, commend the speaker for uh, reminding New Yorkers that April 15th is tax day, actually April 18th this year. Um, it is always good uh, for New Yorkers to remember the verse of the Bible, render to Caesar all that which is Caesar's, which, which for New Yorkers who work, it's 3.85% this year. Uh, it's also a good reminder to legislators that every ribbon we cut, every shovel we put in the ground with a photo comes at the, uh, only at the benefit uh, uh, and the largesse of the city's taxpayers. Uh, so we owe them a gratitude for making us look good on occasion. Now, speaking of ribbons cut, uh, we have all cut ribbons uh, on parks' bathrooms, and I want to commend the sponsor of that legislation because we get so much grief from the public. Uh, we give a lot of grief to the Parks Department with how much park bathrooms cost, and one would think that there would be a livery service in the bathroom for your child's diaper uh, with the amount of money it costs. So uh, at being a father who has gone into many men's rooms and not found the diaper changing area when uh, at a very critical moment when you need it, because you, you don't realize you need it until until you're in the thick of it, uh, and then you need it. Uh, and finally, I just want to explain why uh, many of our conference are voting uh, no on uh, intro 4A, the, the guinea pig bill. Uh, I never imagined defending the virtues of, of guinea pigs, although they are delicious, by the way. If anyone's been to, if anyone's traveled to Peru, they're very, very delicious. Um, but with this particular bill, we're, we're, we're taking bad behavior by customers and owners of these pets, uh, and we're transferring sort of the punishment onto the pet shops. Uh, so that is kind of why uh, we are against it. Uh, we think it'll benefit the pet shops of Nassau County and Westchester and New Jersey, uh, et cetera, uh, and won't really get to the heart of the issue, which is irresponsible pet ownership. So I wish you all a happy holiday. Uh, I'm glad I was able to entertain you all for, for a minute or two, and God bless. And I vote uh, aye on all except 606A, uh, 4A, and Rezo 131. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. This is my, Powers. This is my <laughs> I am voting. Unfortunately, I don't have as, as nearly as a personal or specific explanation of my vote as the minority leader does, but I will be voting aye. Speaker Adams. In behalf of the guinea pigs and all of the great re legislation today, I do vote aye on all. We're just going to take a quick pause while they tell his votes.
All items on today's general order calendar adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative and zero abstentions with the, sorry, 49 in the affirmative, with the exception of intro 4A, adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, seven negative and zero abstentions, intro 606A, adopted by a vote of 42 affirmative, six negative, one abstention, Resolution, I'm going to try to move through this. Resolution 531, adopted by a vote of 48-4, one against, zero abstentions, M131, and Resolution 572, adopted 42-4, four against, three abstentions, M130, and Resolution 571, adopted, uh, adopted by a vote of 48-4, zero against, and one abstention, M132 and Resolution 573, adopted by a vote of 48-4, zero against, one abstention, and M133 and 574, adopted by a vote of 48-4, zero against, and one abstention. Okay, we will now move into the introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We'll now move into the discussion of resolutions. We'll first hear from Council Member Abreu, and we will be followed by uh, the full version of Council Member Sanchez. Thank you, Majority Leader. Today I am proud that this body will consider, res consider Reso 153, which calls upon the DOE to create a Jewish Heritage Day of Instruction in our public schools. In the most diverse city in the world, our schools must teach students to celebrate people of all religions, backgrounds, and cultures. Our schools play a crucial role in educating our students about the danger of bias and harmful rhetoric against marginalized groups. As we prepare to celebrate Jewish Heritage Day in May, this resolution sends a powerful message about the importance of education as a tool to combat hate, intolerance, and religious bigotry. Jewish Americans are an essential part of the fabric of this country and the curriculum should reflect that by celebrating and recognizing their contributions, as well as the challenges they've faced. I look forward to continue working on this issue with advocates and the DOE in the hopes that today's vote will serve as a timely mandate supported by this body. Thank you to Speaker Adams, Councilmember Dinowitz, and advocates, including the Simon Wiesenthal, Wiesenthal Center, Stand With Us, Jewish Heritage Museum, American Jewish Committee, and others for their support. I urge my colleagues to vote aye. Thank you. We'll now hear from Councilmember Sanchez, followed by Councilmember De La Rosa. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, as I was saying, uh, so I, I'm speaking in support of a Resolution Number 344A uh, regarding the creation of a housing access voucher program in Albany, and this is to supplement the the efforts of the city and and even of the federal government. Uh, the city for HEPs vouchers and Section 8 vouchers that we have in the city of New York are not enough. We have 70,000 people, uh, homeless individuals, sleeping in the city shelter system uh, today, and 22,000 of these are children. So I urge Albany to do everything that they can, which includes uh, adding a housing access voucher program in this budget process that they're in. Thank you so much, Majority Leader. Thank you. We'll now hear from Councilmember De La Rosa. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. Today we vote to pass Resolution 131 to call on Wendy's to join the Fair Food Program and support farm workers' human rights. This is a reintroduction that we introduced almost a year ago in conversation with food justice advocates, especially the Immokalee workers who are present here today at our stated meeting and in partnership with our Manhattan Borough President, Mark Levine. The Immokalee workers are a coalition of farmers and allies who have pushed for the human rights and protections for farm workers, most often immigrant workers who have unfortunately endured abuse to make ends meet. They launched the campaign for Fair Food, which establishes consumer worker relationships to leverage buying power, set standards for working conditions, and to curb exploitation, and push partnerships with corporations to ensure that the food we eat comes from socially responsible conditions. The workforce that supplies our food should not endure abuse in exchange for the pennies that they depend on to feed their families. If large corporations are going to operate in our city, then they must do so sustainably. New York City has a global influ influential economy and we have opportunities here as leaders to create a more socially just economies. These workers care for us daily and they deserve sustainable wages, humane working conditions and dignity. I'm proud to sponsor this uh, resolution and I thank our speaker and our colleagues for helping us get it done today. Thank you. 
Thank you. Do we have anyone else signed up to speak on today's resolutions? Okay, seeing none. We'll now have a voice vote on today's resolutions. If you wish to vote against or abstain from any of today's resolutions, please notify the Legislative Documents Unit by email or by approaching the dais before the vote. I'll now read the resolutions into the record. Resolution 131 calls on Wendy's to join the Fair Food Program and support farm workers' human rights. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. Resolution 153 calls upon the Department of Education to create a Jewish Heritage Day in New York City Public Schools. Will all those in favor please say aye. aye. All opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? We have abstention. The ayes have it. Resolution 344A calls upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the Governor to sign Assembly Bill Number 4021 and Senate Bill Number 568A in relation to establishing a housing access voucher program. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We'll now move into general discussion. We are first hearing from Councilmember Hanif, followed by Councilmember Lewis. Thank you. I'm excited to be introducing intro 989 today with Councilmember De La Rosa. This bill will require DCAS to identify which city positions do not require English fluency as part of the job requirement and offer the civil service exam for those positions in 10 designated citywide languages and other languages determined by MOYA and community-based organizations. We know that our city is struggling with hiring. We also know that municipal jobs can be a pathway to the middle class for our immigrant communities. It is common sense to connect qualified immigrant New Yorkers to positions where their lack of English fluency is not relevant or where their fluency in other languages can be an asset. I'm also introducing Rezo 550 today in conjunction with our great Bronx Borough President, Vanessa Gibson, to establish May as Lupus Awareness Month. I've shared my experiences with lupus in this chamber before because it informs my work as a legislator and because the general public is not familiar with this inc incurable autoimmune disease and the health and economic impacts it creates. My hope is that increased awareness of lupus will improve diagnosis, especially among women of color and black women who are disproportionately affected. I also hope it will facilitate a shift towards a city that meets the needs of those with lupus, including making our public transit system fully ADA accessible, allowing for remote work for our municipal employees, providing our municipal retirees with the health coverage they deserve, and passing Medicare for all. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now we hear from Councilmember Lewis, followed by Councilmember Joseph. Thank you, Majority Leader. Today I'm excited to introduce Resolution 557 in partnership with Council Members Hudson, Brewer, Botcher, Powers, and Menon. Through this resolution, we call on the New York State Legislature to pass and sign two bills, S2960 and A5741, that would increase the qualifying income limit for seniors and persons with disabilities for the programs we know as SCRE and DRE. New York City has the highest population of renters in the country, where one in four renters in New York City are older adults. Nearly 60% of them are considered rent burdened, which means that they spend at least 30% of their general fixed income on housing costs, which ultimately restricts the ability to afford other necessities like health care and groceries. Additionally, in New York City, 11% of our population are people with disabilities, and 52% of those spend more than one-third of their income on rent, compared with 42% of their non-disabled peers. New York's older adults and persons with disabilities deserve better than being left vulnerable to the detrimental housing crisis, and we must urgently act to ensure they are protected from being forced out of their homes. Today, many seniors and persons with disabilities that struggle to make ends meet are ineligible for SCREE and DREE programs because they fall outside of the current income gap, income cap of 50,000, which currently hasn't been increased since 2014. Since we last raised the income limit almost a decade ago, the cost of living has skyrocketed and we need to factor in the inflation we're suffering from. The price to merely survive has become an astronomical financial burden. I ask my colleagues to please sign on to this bill. Thank you. 
Thank you. We'll now go to, oh, before we do that, I want to just acknowledge before they leave uh, from Councilmember Barron, so should the elite learners who are here as well. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us. We'll now hear from Councilmember Joseph, followed by Councilmember Shulman. Thank you, Majority Leader Powers. Today, I stand in solidarity with students from Nashville, Tennessee to New York City as they fight for gun control reform. The New York Times recently reported that gun violence recently surpassed car accidents as a leading cause of death for American children. Day after day, students are dying from gun violence due to inaction from leaders. This is an American failure. Just last week, students in Manhattan Central Park East 2 from kindergarten through eighth grade walked out of schools to protest senseless gun violence. This walkout was a part of a nationwide walkout to sound the alarm of an emergency we are in. As a mother of four boys, especially my little one who still attend public school and forever ed educator, one child gunned down is too many. We need to meet the moment and listen to the needs of our students. To New York City students, I stand with you and I have your back. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you. We now will hear from Councilmember Shulman, followed by Councilmember Barron. Thank you, Majority Leader. Today I'm proud to introduce Intro 1001, which would prohibit landlords from knowingly leasing commercial space to a tenant who uses the premises for distribution or sale of cannabis or cannabis products without a license. Many of these shops sell adulterated products and also sell to children. Allowing these shops to proliferate is bad for our communities and also robs those who have been involved in the criminal justice system from getting a legal license and operating a legitimate business and moving forward with their lives. I urge my colleagues to sign on to this important legislation. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Councilmember Barron, followed by Councilmember Velasquez. Uh, thank you very much, my colleagues. Once again, I want to acknowledge the elite learners, some young, dynamic leaders from my district. But I want to remind us, which you already know, that this is budget season. And I just hope that we can keep as a priority the people that are in communities like East New York and other places and elite learners. Just recently, the mayor gave a 4% raise to the PBA, the Patrolman's Benevolent Association. I call them the Patrolman's Brutality Association. They got a 4% raise as he cuts 4% from the city agencies, and yet says he's a mayor of the people. They also cut from city agencies that are vital to us. When you talk about the libraries, health, you name it, these agencies got cut. And they got cut when we have a $4.9 billion unexpected revenue increase. That $4.9 or $7 billion could be used to take care of the unions. But no, this mayor says, I got to cut the agencies in order to take care of the unions so he can have city agency workers fighting against union workers. We should not go for that. On this budget go around, restore all the cuts, not the partial cuts that we sent back as a response, but restore all the cuts. The money is there. There's $8.3 billion in a reserve budget. The money's there. We can even, and we should, pay the $600 million for our retirees so they can have their benefits. That should happen. The city council, the Everyone, city council. Just, let's please let Council Member Barron can, finish his speech. The thing. city council can fix a morally bankrupt wrong decision to give Aetna, who participated in the slave trade, a contract to get billions of dollars for health care and have them go from senior care to Medicare Advantage and pay a premium. Let's do the right thing. We are the people's city council, not the mayors and not the corporations. Thank you, Councilor. Everyone, please hold your applause. Please hold your applause, folks. Folks, please hold your applause. Thank you. Uh, we're now going to go to Councilmember Kagan, followed by Councilmember Narcisse. Thank you. Today I had the privilege to join hundreds of municipal retirees, firefighters, teachers, police officers, librarians, AMS technicians, and many others who are fighting to keep their affordable, accessible, 
and long-premised healthcare. It is not a democratic issue, it's not a republican issue, it is a moral issue. We need to make it right for hundreds of thousands of our municipal retirees. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Folks. Folks, in this council, if you want to applause, you can put your hands up and signify support. We typically ask folks to do that just to let us uh, hear folks out as they're speaking. Um, so if, that's, if, that's, if you want to applause, you can do that. Thanks. Will we now go to Councilmember Narcisse, followed by Councilmember Botcher. Um, thank you. Um, and uh, I mean, my friend, I am happy to introduce the intro 996, which is about hypertension. As a nurse for many decades, I know that um, we are being affected by hypertension. Affected an estimate of 1.8 million adults in New York City and is a leading risk factor to heart disease and stroke. We must provide New Yorkers with resources to combat this epidemic and allow people with resources and opportunity and focus on preventive care. So I'm asking my colleague to support intro 997 would expand the definition of use of force incident that must be reported by NYPD whenever this arises during any confrontation while taking police action, respond to an incident of condition or display or um, on, on holsters, because I want transparency, and we all going for transparency. Razor 562 calls open um, the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation that would ease nursing home staffing and capacity. Right now, we have a constraint. And by increasing Medicaid reimbursement rate by at least 20%, you can provide adequate health care without staffing and money. You need money. This would help provide both the health care that we need to address and the staff um, issue that we're having. I hope you all join me. And I cannot forget intro 992. We need to divert young people to community-based organizations. I support that in full force. So thank you so much for your time. So my colleagues help me out. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember. We will now hear from Councilmember Boucher, followed by Councilmember Holden. Today, I'm introducing legislation that will really help us address an issue that has held us back in our efforts to address sanitation in New York City. We fought really hard over the last year and four months for more basket pickup, street sweeping, et cetera. But you could have all that funding, but if property owners don't adequately clean the sidewalks and gutters in front of their property, we're not going to have a clean city. And while many property owners do the right thing, some don't put much care into the front of their property. The Department of Sanitation has expressed to us that it's difficult for them to enforce the rules because they can only do that for two one-hour periods a day. So today, the legislation I introduced would expand those hours to the hours of operations of those businesses. Um, it's going to really help uh, address the cleanliness in our neighborhoods. I want to thank co-prime sponsor, Councilmember Sandy Nurse, and everyone who is supporting this legislation. I also want to thank council members Shulman and Menon for their legislation regarding unlicensed cannabis shops. It's a total embarrassment how our state has botched the legalization of cannabis by legalizing it and then waiting two years before issuing legal licenses. So now I think we've got like four legal licenses in the state and thousands of unlicensed cannabis sellers in our district. They're next to schools. They are selling to minors. They're undermining the system for everyone yep. who's trying to go by the rules. And not enough is being done to close down the unlicensed sellers and promote the and expand the licensed sellers. Thank you. We'll hear from Councilmember Holden, followed by Councilmember Feliz. Thank you, Majority Leader. I'm introducing two bills today that I need everyone's support on. The first bill, which I'm introducing with my colleagues of the Common Sense Caucus, Intro 991 seeks to create cure periods for certain violations issued by the various city agencies to veteran service organizations like our legions, American legions, halls, and posts. 
Veteran service organizations, or VSOs, operate on a very thin margin, and they all need our help. So we should not penalize them, but allow them to fix any issues and assist them. Our veterans serve the, this country, and we should help them. The second bill, Intro 990, which I'm introducing with Councilmember Lincoln Ressler, would require the New York City Department of Homeless Services, DHS, to ensure that single adult residents have individual sleeping areas partitioned off from the other residents to allow privacy. Everyone needs privacy. Uh, this bill aims to provide much needed privacy and dignity to homeless individuals while they stay in our shelters. I urge all of you to support these bills by signing on to them. These are common sense approaches to serious problems and we owe it to our veterans and homeless uh, individuals to provide them with the necessary support and protection. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Council Member. We'll hear from Council Member Feliz, followed by Council Member Brewer. Thank you, Majority Leader. If you, live in the city of New, if, uh, if you live in the city of New York, you've probably seen paper plates in our cars, uh, paper plates, many of them which are legitimate and many of them which are fake, fraudulent. Fraudulent paper plates have created a new problem for our city, ghost cars. Ghost cars that are being used uh, to violate our traffic laws, including parking-related rules, speeding rules, red light camera rules, but also ghost cars that are, that are being used uh, to commit other major crimes. Fake plates have created new problems, problems that we don't want or need in our communities. Uh, these two bills will hopefully help uh, resolve the problem by discouraging individuals from selling or using them uh, to evade our traffic rules. Speaking about selling, uh, there was a report that basically said one individual uh, generated approximately $300,000 by selling these fake plates. $300,000. They generated $300,000 at the expense of our safety in our roads, at the expense of our safety in our communities, and also at the expense of our resources uh, that we're, uh, we unfortunately have to use to tackle this problem. Uh, so these two bills are important steps. We need to do much more, though. We need to work with uh, marketplaces such as uh, Craigslist, Facebook, eBay, uh, so that they could do more to detect and remove listings re uh, related to these paper plates. We also need federal action. A lot of these plates are coming from different states, including uh, Georgia, Texas, Delaware. We could implement rules, but if other states don't have a standards that apply to them, we're going to go back to square one. So uh, we also need federal action to resolve the problem. Um, I want to thank the prime co-sponsors of these bills, including our very own Majority Leader, Keith Powers, also our Majority Whip and Chair of Transportation, Sylvina Brooks-Powers, also Council Members uh, Marjorie Velasquez, Council Member Lincoln Ressler, Council Member Rafael Salamanca. Uh, we hate fines. Our goal is not to fine. Our goal is to deter individuals from selling uh, and using plates that are fraudulent. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Council Member Brewer and finally from Council Member Ressler. Thank you very much. I rise to talk about something very controversial, which is my understanding is some federal officials are coming to New York simply to chastise District Attorney Alvin Bragg, for whom I have respect. He is a Harvard-trained attorney. He worked here in the City Council in the General Counsel's Office. Um, I know I have constituents who take umbrage with some of his decisions, but he has met with them on a regular basis. He uh, runs a good department in Manhattan, and the way uh, it, that he has been treated by certain, by certain federal officials I find very offensive. So I just want to bring to this audience's attention that there are certainly room for disagreement. We can all do that. But don't do it a way that borders on racism and that uh, chastises somebody who has the intelligence of a very brilliant man. Talk about the issues but don't bring up this kind of accusation. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll now hear from Council Member Ressler. Great, thank you so much, Majority Leader. Uh, I'd firstly like to just say goodbye and good riddance to Patty Lynch. Uh, for too many years, he has made bigoted, racist, inflammatory, statements that have undermined stability in our city, and I, for one, am not at all sorry to see his tenure come to an end at the PBA. Uh, I'd also like to uh, 
just thank my colleagues, Council Members Felice and Holden, on great legislation that I'm proud to be co-priming with them today, especially Council Member Holden's legislation that will bring privacy to individuals in our single adult shelter system. When you are struggling in our shelter system and there are 10 or 12 or 20 odd people in a room, um, it is, and you have no privacy whatsoever, it is extremely challenging. And the partition model that he's developed is one that I think has a lot of promise and would be very beneficial to individuals who are struggling with homelessness in New York City. And then lastly, I just want to thank Councilmember Riley. He and I uh, introduced today a plan for how we can actually get the closure of Rikers on track. I think many people in this body um, have strongly expressed their support for the closure of Rikers, um, but it's not going to happen on its own. We need to make deliberate policy uh, decisions and, 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 uh, and investments that will actually drive down the population. Uh, the decision for how many people are, inc are incarcerated in New York City is a decision. It is a policy decision. And there is no more epic failure than mass incarceration, uh, and we must end it. We must drive down the incarcerated population in New York City. We must achieve the law of closing Rikers by 2027. And I hope colleagues will work together to pass legislation, to make investments in this budget, um, and to actually close Rikers Island. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone else signed up to speak right now? OK. I'm going to hand it over to Speaker Adrian Adams to close out today's stated meeting. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. I would like to echo the sentiments of my colleague, Council Member Gail Brewer, um, in speaking out. And I would also like to recognize and congratulate our colleague, Nashville Council Member Justin Jones, for his reinstatement in the Council in Nashville, Tennessee. On that note, the stated meeting of April 11, 2023 is hereby adjourned.